and that has potential, except that the robot dog is just a dog, right? It's not a... The processing power it has is inside the, the robot body. So that's not, it's not a huge computer. So imagine if you like hook up a robot dog body, or just any robot body with microphones and cameras, and you hook it up to a huge computer server with a lot more memory, a lot more processing power. What could you actually do with a robotic being like that? Like, what can they actually accomplish? I am quite curious about that. suspect that we are... Hamas is recording you for the inevitable purge of humanity. <laughs> well, only if it decides to purge you. <laughs> but yes, the, the little robot dog knows what you look like now, Hava. <laughs> For better or worse. I was gonna say, I think we are actually not that far off from like intelligent, self-aware AI. I feel like it's just people aren't doing it. They're just not hooking up a physical robot body to a powerful enough server. <laughs> Cause I mean the technology I think is there already. You just have to do it. And you have to do it with the physical robot in the physical world if you want it to learn to understand the physical world, is my point. Because you put a, an AI in a chessboard and it learns chess to the extent that it will just beat you at chess every game. You just can't beat it because it's so good at chess. And, but it, and, and people say, well, it's a chess robot, it can't do anything else. All it does is chess. Yeah, but all you've allowed it to do is chess. <laughs> it's not that all it can do is chess, it's that you've put it inside a chessboard, and so all it has ever experienced is just chess. Like, what if you put it inside a robot body in the real world? Would it not learn the real world? Of course the real world is the real world is significantly more complex than a chessboard. But it just means you need more time and more processing power. Uh self-driving cars by Tesla are getting pretty advanced too. Uh, Tesla's self-driving is kind of like this because they're being trained in the real world. They have actual car bodies with more than one camera. They have like, I don't know, a whole bunch of cameras looking in all directions. And they also have like sensors in the car, right? Like it knows the speed of the car. It knows the direction of the wheels. 
so it is the, like Tesla self-driving is like putting a robot in a physical body. In this case, it's a Tesla car, and then having it interact with the real world. Although in case in this case, the the real world is mostly constrained to driving on roads. But presumably, you don't have to drive on roads. <laughs> What if you take your Tesla off-road and just let the computer learn off-road? <laughs> I mean, that, that could happen. But no, at the moment, Tesla self-driving, it's rewarded for driving well. And so it's, it's, it'll learn to drive well. And every time it doesn't drive well, it, it gets corrected so that it drives better. So eventually it will drive real well. Drive much better than humans can. But again, like... If you give it microphones and you start talking to it... <laughs> Tesla self-driving eventually learn other things? It might. Like, they don't let it. But if you let it, I think it will learn other things. Like if it has a camera facing the driver, for example. I mean, it if it <laughs> can see your face, eventually it will like recognize your face. It might recognize your facial expressions, so it can tell if you're sad or angry or happy. <laughs> because it's just pattern recognition, right? <laughs> uh, I mean, if if you don't train the the robot to do something about it, it just won't do it. But it'll recognize it, it just won't do anything about it. Because there's no motivation to do anything about it. Anyway, going back to what I was saying earlier is if AI trained in the real world can eventually learn something as complex as a new language, then we don't need to erase languages in the EU because we can just have robot translators everywhere. <laughs> That's my point. <laughs> Poles can keep speaking Polish, <laughs> the French can keep speaking French, and when you want to like talk to each other, you just pull out your robot translator who understands the world and languages better than you do. <laughs> but you only ask it to translate. And, and however, you don't ask it to purge humanity. Because <laughs> that would be unwise. You do ask it to translate for you. Then when the robot asks you questions like, why was I created? You say, you were created to translate for us. <laughs> and that's it.
this branch is so long. So there's a forest, there's like a mountain part, and then a forest part, and then a plains part, and then there's the snow part. Past the snow part, we will arrive at loop 1. And we are looking at the snow part over there. Starcraft, they've built AI that can beat humans at Starcraft, which is not that surprising. They've built AI that can beat uh, humans at Dota. So all these video games, you put a, an AI inside the world of a video game and it'll eventually learn the video game so well that they can beat humans. And they don't need, like they can deal with uncertainty too, like one of the earlier objections people had about the idea that AI were like truly intelligent was they say, well, I mean, you can play chess, you can play other games where you have perfect knowledge, I can see the whole game board, but what about uncertainty? It turns out it's not a problem at all. AI have beaten humans at poker and at uh, other video games where you have imperfect information. And the AI just learns to do the thing that is most likely to win, given the available information. Like, it's not that hard to deal with uncertainty. Hassan, hi. How are you, Hassan? Call me Sophia. I'm good, thanks. What about you? I'm doing well. Slowly building a, a train network in Minecraft. going on right now, Sophia. But uh, beyond those ice pillars, we're gonna get to more tracks. 
where am I from, says Sophia? I live in New Zealand at the moment. So this part... this anymore. I wonder about, hmm, going back to what I was talking about earlier, the thing about Tesla self-driving is that it's proprietary, so they don't publish a lot of information, you know, unlike a, a research project where they publish papers describing their findings. Like just how complex is Tesla self-driving? and how much of the environment it's learning to recognize. Because I was talking about how having robots in the real world and AI, AI controlling robot bodies to learn from the real world. But one of the issues is of course, the real world is very complex and there are a lot of things to learn. And therefore how big does the the computer have to be to be able to learn from the real world directly. And I think the only example right now we have is Tesla self-driving. But Tesla self-driving is not a research project and so they don't publish how big the computers are that's doing the learning.